A warm welcome to you all. On behalf of Green Tree Global, I'd like to welcome you all to the webinar on the introduction to passive design and daylight simulation. My name is Donna and I will be your host for this webinar. A few instructions before we begin. Firstly, please note that you have joined in via audio so you can clearly hear the webinar. Secondly, a humble request to please switch off your video and keep your mic uh, on mute throughout the session. Thirdly, if in case you have any questions or queries uh, during the webinar, request to please submit your questions via the Q&A chat box. As we are all going through a pandemic, which has put a lot of strain on our personal and professional lives, I do hope you are all safe and taking the necessary precautions. With regards to the webinar, our webinar will help you learn about passive design and daylight simulation directly from our experience team. Additionally, it will give you an approach on the new age concepts of sustainable design and case studies for deeper insights. Prior to beginning, I would like to give you a few highlights about Green Tree Global and the work we do. I request we please move to the next slide, please. Nidhi, can you please move to the next slide? All right, the next slide again, please. All right. The company was first started in 2009 and over the years we have provided services in four major verticals. If we can move to the next slide, please. Firstly, advisory services in energy efficiency, in the use of renewable energy, CSR activities and others. Secondly, sustainable design and implementation, which includes building certifications, audits, ESCOs and others. Thirdly, products and solutions, which provides an energy management solution for both residential and commercial projects. And lastly, skill development, providing customized training programs for students as well as professionals. Can we move to the next slide, please? With respect to the skill development, let me now introduce to you the GT Academy. This is an initiative by the Green Tree Global Team to help students and professionals gain hands-on experience on best industry practices. We offer courses based on the current and future industrial requirements. The courses over time will encompass every domain associated with sustainability, architecture, building performance, energy efficiency, planning, engineering, research, technology, and design. We have designed the courses to highlight the basic fundamentals and applications and integrations of every subject in the above verticals. Can we move to the next slide, please? All right. So as you can see on this slide today, once you join into the course, the procedure is quite simple. You will register with us for the course. You will attend all the lectures. And after all the lectures are done, you will have to answer a simple examination, which is, will be completely related to the entire course, and following which you will be given certificates of completion and a recognition on LinkedIn. Can we move to the next slide, please? All right. So now I would like to introduce our next speaker. Mr. Anurag Bajpai. Mr. Bajpai is a co-founder and a director of Green Tree Global. He leads the technical division. His scope covers the technical operations, brand development of the company, and explores innovative best practices for delivery. I welcome you, Mr. Bajpai. Thank you, Dona, for the introduction. And thank you all the participants for attending uh, the webinar. As uh, the program topic that we talk about, the passive design and uh, daylight integration. We are going to talk about uh, four uh, uh, specific areas, and we have subdivided the whole uh, uh, webinar subject into four lectures, which we are going to cover in three days' time. The lecture that talks about uh, the introduction to passive design strategies, which will be the first lecture. Now, in general, when we talk about the building design, we surely starts with uh, the design principles, how the building should look like. In general, whenever we see the building, uh, 
uh, we see the building envelope first and then we talk about the next level of integration which is the engineering side of uh, the building let's say in a, in a particularly uh, in building build design civil parts the component we also talk about the system which uh, is pretty much like the supply side of the equipment means the electrical transformers and etc but the most important aspect that we see is the building design part and this is where we see how we can integrate the natural uh, uh, resources like daylight or the sunlight which can be integrated uh, with the building design and secondly how we need to design the building which is supposed to be passive in nature which is supposed to be climate responsive because in india we have five climatic zones all the building design that we talk about they are supposed to respond to the climate locally means in case if we are designing a building in cold climate it should allow more heat in inside the space it should allow more sunlight in inside the space similarly in case if we are designing a building in composite climate condition it needs to be considered uh, that the building should respond to the climate means when we talk about the composite it means that we have almost like eight months time which uh, are predominantly summer and then we have the rest of the four months which we need to take care of the winter uh, time in the building then the design has to be responsive uh, to those uh, in the composite uh, peak summer and peak winters conditions both uh, and that is where we see a lot more design level uh, principles and integration that need to be taken care of very well. So that is like the first principle in terms of orientation so that we can get enough sunlight. But we also need to look at the aspects in terms of avoiding the heat gain inside the building. So this is the first thing that we need, we'll be discussing in terms of introduction to passive design strategies in terms of daylight integration and the basic principles of design. Lecture two that will be uh, covering almost like uh, uh, what exactly the daylight component and then the performance matrix with respect to building design. When we say performance matrix, it means that when we talk about the simulation tools uh, or the daylight integration, we need to, to look at the aspects in terms of uh, what is the statistic, what is the static uh, uh, parameters and what are the dynamic parameters through which we need to analyze the building uh, uh, with respect to the daylight uh, inside of the space, which is coming from uh, natural resources. So, certainly the daylight benefits, uh, and then the performance matrix like uh, daylight factor, DF, and uh, daylight autonomous, uh, DA. And then what are uh, the ratings requirement in terms of these uh, matrices and uh, cold compliances like ECBC and ASHA 9.1. So, they uh, Parameters, these parameters shall be discussed in uh, the lecture two. Now, the third uh, lecture, which talks about uh, daylight analysis by Ecotet. So, this is like uh, the comprehensive tool where a lot more colleges and institutions they have been using this. A lot more architecture firms or the engineering firms they also have uh, utilized this tool, its power in terms of making the building more uh, passive designed. Uh, so, we'll be uh, uh, let's say having this tool demo session in this case so there will be a specific case study which we'll be uh, uh, discussing and then uh, uh, we'll uh, certainly uh, expect all of you uh, as an attendee uh, of the course uh, should follow the course instructions in terms of uh, how we can develop the uh, building design with respect to the daily spaces inside the space. Then certainly the last one in terms of uh, dynamic simulation tool through DIVA. So these are the four lectures primarily. Uh, we'll be also looking at the integrating uh, lecture one with lecture three uh, and lecture two with lecture uh, three and four together so that uh, there will be uh, uh, some component of the technical discussions in terms of the subjective uh, subject information and then also will be uh, compensated or will be covered as, uh, on the same uh, day of the tool uh, uh, demonstration so that there will be a, a mix of uh, uh, presentation and the tool uh, uh, demonstration uh, to make the uh, learning more interesting. 
uh, that is what we uh, also expect that you all need to learn uh, a lot uh, during the three days of the course uh, demonstration and the webinar and whatever the questions that you will have we would certainly like to discuss more and more we'll also like to make it more interesting in terms of a uh, lot more uh, uh, queries and the questionnaires and also the case studies that we have been doing for last uh, over a decade period of time so that uh, a course component can be made more interesting and more attractive to all of you and uh, with uh, this uh, uh, a short uh, discussion or description of the course that we are going to present over a period of time i'll also like to let uh, my fellow speaker in terms of discussing the particular course uh, in more detail that how and what are the uh, content that we are going to cover uh, uh, now uh, over to uh, dona again to let the proceedings uh, further thank you very much all of you thank you mr vajpay without further ado we'll go to our next speaker Ms. Nidhi Kosla. Ms. Kosla is an energy analyst of the Sustainability Division of Green Tree Building Energy Private Limited. She has a bachelor's in architecture and a master's in energy efficiency and sustainable architecture. I welcome you, Ms. Kosla. Thank you, Luna. Uh, thank you, Anurag, sir, for briefing or the overview of the lectures. Uh, I'll be going more deeper, uh, lecture wise, what are we going to cover in this session? So our first lecture will be introduction to passive design strategies. In this, we'll be covering uh, just uh, like an overview or the basic introduction of solar passive design, what it is. Uh, uh, just to give you an uh, overview of what passive design is, it's, uh, it use, it's a way of designing in which we use the natural or the ambient energy sources. to So the, it targets two goals to reduce of course the energy use of building or the energy consumption of the building and the second most foremost uh, you know the uh, important target is to maximize the occupant's comfort and health so that is more uh, overlooked by the designers nowadays we are just uh, uh, focusing on energy efficiency but at the same time we have to take care of the comfort and health of the building users and the occupants so this will be targeting the how are we going to uh, reduce energy as well and to maximize the uh, human comfort inside the building. Then we'll be talking about the principles of passive design. Uh, I'll be uh, explaining you in uh, just a brief of, of these climatic uh, factors that affect the local climate. Comfort analysis will be doing by checking what factors are the, you know, they play the role in affecting the comfort of an individual. Then microclimate, building orientation and plan form, they itself, they play a greater role in deciding the energy efficiency. And of course, the building envelope, as sir has already mentioned, that this is the most foremost part where, because that, that, that is where it is connected to the exteriors, uh, exterior environment. So what passive design, uh, what, what shall be considered while designing a building in the starting of the stage. Uh, there's a broad categorization like site, building orientation, plan form, building envelope. So these are the basic, like in building envelope, if we say roof, walls, external color and texture, fenestration, shading. So here shading means the shading devices that we are designing for the fenestrations. Fenestrations, of course, are the openings, uh, windows, voids, or any uh, door openings also. So we'll be talking of how uh, we are going to design a shading device, the horizontal uh, overhang that's uh, called chajas and vertical fins. What should be the depth of that uh, structure, that overhang, so that uh, we can cut the sun rays to enter inside our building if they're, uh, uh, like in hotter time, of course, as Sir has already mentioned, like in composite climate, there are seasons like winter season in which we need uh, sun, sun rays to enter in the building. But in summer months, we, uh, we restrict the sun rays to come inside the building. So this is where the shading devices play a greater role. Then plan form uh, the shape of the building to enhance the ventilation and the solar heat gain. Sorry, to, uh, to control the solar heat gain, I would say. 
building orientation of course the same thing that uh, it affects the solar heat gain and the ventilation uh, site may we have macro climate and micro climate if talking about micro climate we have uh, micro climate means the site conditions like the landform matlab the topography of the site vegetation water bodies street width and orientation open spaces and built form it will cover the effects of courtyards that will be discussing uh, in depth in the course lecture in macro climate there are two things uh, climatic factors that depends uh, that affects the uh, local climate of the uh, space and comfort factors that affects the comfort comfort of the individual so the climatic factors that these are uh, solar radiation ambient temperature air humidity precipitation wind sky conditions so these are all the outdoor uh, factors while if you are talking about the comfort factors these all are the indoor uh, like air, if i'm talking about here ambient temperature this will be the inside indoor air temperature i'm talking about mean radiant temperature this is the average of all the surfaces around an individual so uh, of course the metabolic rate how much of physical work a person is doing air speed inside the building clothing insulation so these all factors it uh, it affects the comfort of an individual and these should not be related like the climatic factors it talks about the outdoor conditions and comfort factors here we are talk will be talking about the indoor uh factors so this is all about the passive design like uh, these things we'll be talking about and of course the shading uh, we'll be doing this in ecotech the shading devices uh, how the shading masks also we'll be talking about then sun path diagram all these things will be covered under this section the second lecture will be uh, introduction to daylight and performance metrics now we all know daylighting is uh, another strategy of uh, it is one of the strategies of passive design so it of course has numerous benefits uh, of course in saving energy by offsetting the use of artificial lighting inside the buildings it affects the health of an individual it increases the productivity and uh, yeah productivity of office workers if i can talk about or the productivity of an individual if it if he's in a daylight in environment throughout the day and uh, the yeah it connects the interior and exterior spaces the fenestrations or the opening windows that allow that is that are allowing allowing daylight inside the building and uh, it in, also enhances the visual performance of a of an individual then uh daylighting has been also associated with the human circadian rhythm that of course we will be going deep into this because this is a new upcoming research topic that we will be looking into then measuring daylight what are the there are two uh, common things uh, uh, in a lay, layman language what is illuminance and what is luminance so the difference between the two then daylight performance metrics there are as sir has already explained static metrics and the dynamic metrics so dynamic are the recent one that are developed by the researchers or the developers of uh, developers uh, these dynamic metrics they are the climate based metrics it will take they take into account the climatic conditions of a particular location but the daylight factor if we say that the static metric it doesn't it has so many limitations so to run an analysis or to study daylight these things has to be uh, you know these things are too important to get to know what are the limitations and where are we using this metric for for what purpose we will be using so these things uh, should be known initially then what are the daylight requirements as per the building codes and standards we will be talking about indian codes and uh, standards here then green building rating system may what are the incorporation of which dpms uh, we call it as dpm uh, daylight performance metrics man so what dpms are incorporated by the green building rating system like neat is talking about sda so we will be going deep into that and daylighting strategies how we can enhance daylight or uh, you know sunlight to come inside the building via passive design features like skylights how much should be the area wwr these standards will be talking about so this is a 
what all metrics we will be discussing daylight factor daylight autonomy continuous daylight autonomy spatial daylight autonomy and useful daylight illuminance and what are their usage what are their limitations all we'll be talking so the third lecture uh, is daylight analysis by ecotech ecotech is a software at autodesk this will be So uh, here we are doing in Green Tree uh, the daylight analysis by both Ecotech and Diva. Diva is a plugin for Rhino. Rhino is a 3D modeling software. So both these software simulations will be uh, taking online sessions. Here I'm just showing the screenshots of the software just to uh, you know uh, take you to the. Let's go through this one. So it's talking about the toolbar. What are all there? The shortcuts. Okay, so uh, to model a building in Ecotech, we have a DXF file, we, a 2D file we can import from uh, AutoCAD. So this can be used in creating a 3D model here itself in Ecotech. Then uh, these are the settings for modeling only. We are importing SLD. Uh, the main factor here, like uh, this is taking the weather file, of course, uh, to run the analysis then we are will be assigning materials for walls roof uh, the ceilings floors and uh, giving the material properties for glass so these are the, all the input values that we will be giving to the software before analyzing yeah so these are the various steps that it asks before doing the simulation in ecotech these all steps we have to give the inputs then after that, we just run OK and we'll be having the simulation results as shown here. So these are the false color images of the Lux level that we are getting. Uh, you can see the scale here from 0 to 700 plus. So like this, we can interpret the results. OK, now this is like we can import, we can export the results in an Excel format also. So here we are showing that each and every node is giving a particular lux level. We like this detail is there in the software that we can get the luminance level of all the nodes here. Then Ecotect is also uh, used for doing the sun, uh, shading analysis by uh, importing an uh, annual sun path of that particular location. So these are the things that uh, Ecotect can do. Now we'll be moving to Diva software. So this is the uh, this is what is explained like from Ecotech. Uh, we'll be making uh, 3D modeling in Ecotech. We'll do 3D modeling in Ecotech, and then we'll export that DXF format into Rhino, and then we'll run the analysis with Diva. So this is uh, so we will export it. We'll be ex exporting this into DXF format, and this is a user interface of Rhino software. We'll import the same made DXF here. It will come as a uh, line diagram. So we have to create surfaces here. So yeah, the surfaces are done. We will assign the layers also to each and every surface then importing the weather file then checking the grid values so we have to make a grid on which the analysis will be done providing the surf, uh, surface finishes material properties then we okay now here the uh, uh, the advantage of using diva is we can run all the uh, discussed metrics like the daylight performance metrics which are climate based metrics like daylight autonomy sda cda and uh, useful daylight illuminance so these are run by dayson we can't do this in uh, ecotech uh, because we are using radiance in ecotech so there are differences between uh, radiance and dayson that we'll be uh, of course discussing later so after simulation this type of report is generated by dayson in which we can see here daylight factor, daylight autonomy, 
continuous daylight autonomy, useful daylight illuminance. So these kind of results we are uh, will be exporting after the analysis is done. So this was the fourth that I have just explained. And uh, yeah, uh, over to you, Donna. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Nidhi. All right. Okay. If anyone has any questions regarding the course, I request you to submit them all uh, onto the chat platform that is uh, that is available here. Right. I'd like to ask the panel to please um, unmute themselves so we can uh, go ahead with the Q and A session. Anuragji, if there's something you would like to add to what Nidhi has said that's going to happen during the courses, I request you to uh, kindly do so. Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, uh, Nidhi has explained it already. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. very much so. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we'll be discussing uh, more uh, on the passive design features, then the uh, daylight metrics in terms of static, static and uh, dynamic. And then the tools description so that the case studies that we'll be using with help of uh, the description of the project and uh, the tool demonstration will certainly be more uh, like the uh, uh, live case study in terms of uh, activities that we are doing and as well as uh, uh, participants who will be uh, uh, using the laptops or the desktops they can actually uh, uh, follow the same they can learn and I'm sure like the more uh, deliberations and discussions over the case studies or their own uh, projects where someone is trying to do the problems uh, that they are facing and resolution of those problems will certainly be helping the participants in terms of learning the tool as well as the principles behind uh, the uh, analysis which uh, uh, the tool uh, uh, gives in terms of the results. But tool, as we have mentioned, a tool gives the result, this is part and then bring change design. That is something that uh, the designers told uh, uh, always there uh, in terms of uh, making the building more passive when we design building and harnessing maximum uh, uh, to the natural resources which are available like daylight spaces and making the building more uh, comfortable in terms of visual comfort and thermal comfort both. All right, sir. We've got a couple of questions that have been submitted. All right, uh, I will ask one by one. All right, firstly, uh, I, um, can you please ex uh, explain uh, that we are designing something on Ecotech for analysis and why mm -hmm. is Rhino needed for, uh, for the further analysis? Can't we directly use the plugin? So as far as I understand the question, uh, mm -hmm. uh, because I have explained Ecotech and then uh, Rhino. Rhino, yes. Yeah, so no, Ecotech itself is a, uh, you know, whole tool in which we can perform the analysis and get the results. That is the point in time illuminance that we'll get from Diva using, uh, sorry, Ecotech using the Radiance engine. So there are two things. Ecotech is limited to the point in time illuminance. Uh, it will not, you know, integrate the whole annual analysis. So it has a limitation. These all metrics like daylight autonomy, the recent one, the climate-based metric, these are not supported or we can't get uh, the results from Ecotech. For that, if we are doing these, uh, if we want the results in these metrics, for that we have to switch to the Rhino. Uh, and uh, of course Rhino is just a 3D model in that Diva is a plugin. So with Diva, we can do all these metric analysis. All right. Uh, we go to the next question. Uh, so Medha says she is an architect and Diva is a very new software for her. She wants you to explain a little bit more about Diva. Okay, right now or uh, maybe in the course? Just, just, a, just a little bit, li just a little bit uh, more about Diva. Just for her. Okay, okay, sure.
so uh, this is my 3d model is done either i can make it in uh, rhino or it it was easy for me to export it from ecotech because i am uh, pretty much aware of what uh, the 3d modeling is in ecotech so you can make 3d model in rhino and then run diva plugin as i'll be explaining so the here you can see there are four things this is a diva plugin we have to input the location of the uh, projects set the nodes here then materials we have to assign materials to each like the, here we can see the layers like floor wall ceilings and then we have to specify the glass properties to the window layer so each and every like the floor we have separate layer walls we will be having separate layer in the ceilings and the windows so for all the layers we will be assigning materials and then this is the analysis bar uh, in which we will be uh, like choosing which metric we want as a result so in location by selecting the location i'll be putting the epw file of the particular location like here i'm selecting new delhi we can download it from the energy plus website it is available there then here okay these are the okay these are the nodes that we have uh, to give it as an input where do we want an analysis to be done Uh, which floor level we will be giving height here it's wrong i'll show the next slide here like i want uh, these many mm or 100 mm or sorry 800 mm or a meter above from my floor level i'll be setting a grid it will be asking me the inputs like how much uh, distance spacing between the nodes you want so i think here i've selected 500 mm by 500 mm so if you're talking about green building standards green building itself they have this uh, description of what uh, distance of the nodes should be there while doing the analysis so location is done nodes are done then we will be providing the materials for all the different layers here we'll go in assign materials so these are the layer names that we have created you can put any surface in any layer in which if you want similar kind of uh, materials uh, material property for ceiling okay now these materials they are there uh, by default yeah uh, so these are the materials there are uh, default materials of diva we can add on our own material using the grasshopper script that is another thing so it almost has everything in it like the ceiling then we have floor windows uh, and walls now the material part is done now i've moved up to matrix so here it is asking daylight factor point in time illuminance what this is this is i have to select a day and the time of the that day in which i want the uh, analysis to be done so this is not an integrated annual analysis that annual analysis will be done in climate based matrix here this can be done these both things can be done in ecotech as well the daylight factor and point in time illuminance but this climate base this was not in the, not there this is a limitation of ecotech we can say so here it's asking which metric you want here's a drop down you can select any metric that you want occupancy schedule of the building uh, target illuminance we can set i have like it's mostly 200 or 300 lux we can select the units it is uh, either uh, lux or foot candela then radius parameter radians parameters and all those things we can just run the simulation and this type of uh, image will come here we can uh, input minimum and the maximum percentage because these all metrics these these come with the percentage like the results are in the percentages uh so you need to know which metric what is the definition of each and every metric and these will be done later on uh, like i'll be explaining you each and every metric what is the usage and what are the limitations of each and every at uh, this dpm then yeah so this kind of uh, report will be generated by daysim in which you have all these metrics ka result all right all right all right yeah. <laughs> thank you so much nidhi
All right. Uh, so Sonash, Sonakshi is asking, do we need to have a previous knowledge of Rhino to attend this course? Uh, I guess just the basic 3D modeling that we'll be covering, of course. So I don't think so. Anything needed, we'll be uh, doing from the scratch only. All right. All right. So Sakshi, I think your uh, question is also related to Sanakshi. What Sakshi is asking is Ecotech taught during the session or will there be just a brief introduction about software? Nidhi, no. you want to hear? Yeah. Yeah, we'll be try running the software uh, live. This is just an overview. I've just shown the pictures of screenshots of what we have already done. Of course, the whole day will be spent on Ecotech and the other day will be spent on uh, Diva. So the whole thing will be covering. Order. Okay. Um, one last question. Okay, uh, Priyanka, your question is very much related to... Uh, zoning so uh, e what priyanka is asking is in ecotech how do we merge one or more uh, same zones into one zone all right example in a floor there are four rooms and how to make them one zone this is very much uh, uh, um, during uh, during the construction of a 3d model uh, question nidhi if you can mm -hmm. yeah so i think uh, uh, the zone is not a requirement we just need the layers which layer uh, ka, or I think you can just uh, I don't know why are you uh, asking this because I never uh, find this thing ki, uh, I need to do this but if you can just elaborate why do you need this then I can right. uh, I am assuming uh, Priyanka says she is already uh, zoned uh, her room okay. she wants to split it into four uh, four sections so she can run an analysis on all four sections. Priyanka, am I understanding that correctly? Priyanka, you can unmute yourself and just explain a bit about your question so it can be answered. Hello, Priyanka. All right, uh, what you can do Priyanka is you can just send your query to us and we'll make sure your query is answered. All right, uh, again, uh, another one asked uh, if we need prior knowledge. No, you will not require. Both softwares will be taught from scratch. Um, Sorbi uh, is asking uh, why Ecotech has limitations. Why can't design builder be used? As in, uh, why, why, why Ecotech is being uh, chosen as a software for design? Uh, Ecotech is a basic software. It is very user-friendly software. So just to uh, run a quick analysis, because I think Dale uh, Design Builder is time consuming, I guess. I haven't used it for daylighting. Uh, we are using it for uh, CFD analysis. So Ecotech is like a quick software to get the results. And Diva is much more uh, accurate, I would say. So these two software, that's why we are using it here. I don't know about... Uh, how much accurate is design builder in case of daylighting? All right. Uh, yeah, so exactly. Um, Nidhi, I think uh, I'll also uh, have a comment to make on this. So mm -hmm. when we say design builder, uh, it is the front end for the energy simulation tool uh, like Energy Plus. The basic purpose or maybe I think I would say the prime purpose of design builder is to give the uh, let's say uh, uh, ease uh, to the user in terms of developing the model and uh, uh, preparing the DXF files uh, or input files so that the file can be utilized further in terms of doing the energy analysis through Energy Plus simulation engine. Now other uh, uh, parts which have been integrated recently in terms of CFD, computational fluid dynamics as an analysis, and then the daylight uh, which basically utilizes the radiance uh, uh, as a plugin in this as a simulation engine. Uh, but um, in terms of uh, more user friendly is the uh, uh, preferred option because when you talk about the daylight analysis uh, through the Ecotech, uh, certainly it's uh, very, very uh, fast uh, and user friendly tool compared to the uh, design builder. And as you have also mentioned that it takes more time in terms of running the tool, running the model compared to, uh, let's say, Ecotech precisely. All right, so um, there aren't any uh, more questions. Okay, so uh, I'm 
I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a few announcements. If any of you want to join the course, all right, I will give you the course dates. The course begins on the 30th of June and ends on the 2nd of July. All right. If in case you all have any queries, questions, you all all are uh, you all all have my number. I have I have sent you all uh, messages regarding the links. All right. If in case you have more questions, you can directly send it to me, or you can uh, send it to our email ID, uh, Anuragji. If you can show the last slide on on the presentation, you can send all your queries over to training at greentree dot global. All right. If you have any other questions, again directly you can send it to me or to the email ID. All right. I would like to uh, thank everyone who has joined us today, especially uh, Mr. Bajpayee and Ms. Kotla. You've taken your immense time and told us a lot about the course. Thank you so much, there. And also like to thank all the participants for joining in today. I hope the session has. Dona, your Dona, your voice is breaking. My voice is breaking. All right, not an issue. I will repeat that. As I was saying, if you have any queries, please connect to us via training at greentree dot global. If we can help you out um, joining the course, and any other questions you have about the course, you can directly send it to this email ID. You also have my number. I have been sending you all the links to uh, the Zoom uh, meeting. All right, you can send me your queries there as well. Um, Okay, we have one more question. Who uh, it's just come in right now? Uh, what specification do we need for EcoTech? Uh, if you can just elaborate a little more on that question, sir, uh, Jeevesh. If you can just elaborate a little more on that question, I can answer it for you. All right. And as I was saying, the course starts on the on the thirtieth, and uh, will. Dona, your voice uh, is still. Uh, All right. Yeah. How about now, sir? Is this better? much better all right fine. so uh, i was saying you can uh, the course begins on the 30th of june and ends on the 2nd of july the timing of the course will be from 5 pm to 7 pm all right if in case you guys have any questions i'm going to repeat you can uh, uh, send us your queries on training at greentree.global or you can send it to me directly all right um, uh, anuragji i would like to ask you uh, to move to the closing address sir yeah so thank you uh, adona and thank you niti for explaining uh, uh, the uh, forthcoming course uh, and its technical details in uh, great detail and uh, also thank you uh, all participants in terms of attending uh, this uh, introduction course uh, webinar and we are hopeful to see you all there in the course and uh, whatever the queries that you'll have certainly uh, uh, our team and we'll be uh, available for uh, uh, the response and for your disposal in case if you have any query in between um, and then you can ask we'll be certainly be very much willing to respond them back and uh, you can write them uh, to our email id uh, which is mentioned in this slide and uh, look forward uh, you all to join the course and uh, having more and more learning uh, throughout the course uh, as well so uh, thank you all once again thank you adona and nidhi for Ji. organizing this and thawal as well uh, behind the scene thank you so much thank you thank you so much for everyone joining us today i hope this has been an informative session for you on behalf of green tree global team i'd like to say uh, stay home and stay safe and uh, once again thank you to all the speakers and the participants